This glow stick can kind of communicate to us uh, one of the truths that's in the gospel, some of the truth that's in the gospel. I think this glow stick can help show us uh, some things about our life. And, and the thing that I want you to capture, now I know these people are plastic, not glow sticks. I'm going to need you to tap in, out of your ADHD and kind of pay attention here. Right here, right here, kids, right here. <laughs> I got a fourth grade class right now, right here. This is called a glow stick for all the older people you've never made, never seen this before. Uh, and the way that they work is if you break it, and you kind of break it all the way down. Don't do it yet. Dr. Hunt, I'm just kidding. Go ahead and break it. I was just kidding. I'm just playing. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> if you break the glow stick and then shake it, it'll make it light up. If you break it and shake it, see, I'm about to do a little remix here. If you break it and shake it, it'll make your glow stick light up. If you break it and shake it, so it's pretty simple, and, and to keep, get it to light all the way through, you kind of got to break it through the whole device. Now, we have some little uh, uh, devices out there that you can make a little bracelet with it if you want when you leave out of here. Um, you, can, you can carry around. Now, you know, for instance, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, if you're out on Tank Farm Road, 1 o'clock in the morning, have a flat tire, you can buy you some bigger uh, glow sticks, some bigger torches, and you can break them and really light up some stuff. I kind of want to use this as an illustration tonight with the Christmas story. That quite often when God asks you to do something or you become a believer or you start trying to try the God thing out, you'll go through a period of breaking and shaking. And so many people stop believing in God right here. So many people lose hope in the breaking and shaking of life. And while, while the breaking and shaking is going on in Joseph and Mary's story, God is up to something. And quite often what happens to us in the breaking and shaking of life, we quit on God. We have no clue that God is up to something. And this, tonight, I was hoping I could say something to help you glow up. You know, how you like that for play on words? To say something to help you glow up that you wouldn't question God every time there's a breaking and shaking going on in your life. That you wouldn't arrive at this place of doubt every time there was a breaking and shaking going on. But if you really sat down and read the scriptures, you would see over and over again, people that said yes to God went through a breaking and a shaking period. They went through a period where there were some detours. They went through a period where they thought there were some dead ends. They went through a period where things weren't going right. They went through a period where things didn't seem right or, dare I say, fair. I mean, we're fighting for fairness all over this planet right now. And fairness ended in the garden. As soon as Adam and Eve ate that fruit, fair went out the door. And that doesn't mean we don't strive for peace and harmony and all these things. But this is a dangerous thing in our spiritual walk, that God made you to glow. And he's not as concerned about your idea of happiness. He's not as concerned about your idea of your feelings and your self-esteem as you think he is. He's more concerned that we would glow in dark places, that we would find hope in some of the darkest places. And that's what's going on with Mary and Joseph. I mean, as soon as she said, amen, or so be it, Everything that could go wrong went wrong. And quite often we think saying yes to God means open doors. And people preach good messages. If he bring you to it, he'll bring you through it. And, and, <laughs> and we get all these rhyming words together. And pregnancy is hard enough, let alone carrying God's kid. Just pregnancy alone back in her day is difficult enough, let alone moving and census and death. They went through this breaking and shaking period. I honestly believe that as Jesus was born, God was preparing him for his ultimate glory. The, the story of resurrection and the story of the crucifixion is all around baby Jesus. The same clothes, Nick was talking about this last night at Monday night service, that the same clothes that baby Jesus wore was the same clothes they put him in when they put him in a tomb. And that ultimately, when you see the Christmas story, you're seeing the resurrection story. But just as much Jesus was getting prepared for his purpose, Mama Mary was getting prepared for her purpose. She was learning faithfulness on that dark night. She was learning devotion on that dark night. She was also learning that even though your circumstances aren't perfect, it doesn't mean that God cares less. And even when it's dark, 
And even when it seems like life isn't fair, and even when it seems like you aren't winning, and even when it seems like God isn't working, He's working. Hope is what makes us glow up. And when you get home, you can read Romans 5, 1 through 6, and you can see that ultimately the breaking and shaking, the testing of God produces hope. Hope produces this awesome thing in us that causes us to glow up even when it's dark. And the cool thing about a glow stick is it's not saying, well, I'll wait till some more light comes in the room and then I'll glow. Glow sticks don't say, I need another glow stick to show up for me to glow. Glow sticks don't say, you know what? I'm too expensive (laughs) to glow. They do what they were manufactured to do. If you shake it, if you break it, you will glow. And I'm just telling you, one way that you know that you're a child of God is you don't quit. You don't give up. So let me, hold on, let me show y'all what I'm talking about here. I'm going to pull some plugs around here. Can I do that, Jacob? Am I going to get in trouble? Where's Jacob at? I don't want to get fired here. Jacob, all right. If, if, if something happens, y'all run. <laughs> That's right, because we ain't got insurance, so run. All right, so I'm going to pull the plug over here. No, I got it. No, they can, it's okay. They, they can sit through this. It's all right. Everything's okay, y'all. Nobody has to freak out. It's all right. This is just took 30 seconds. 30 seconds. I'm going to pull this plug here. Look at that. If something happens, run. Nothing happened. We good. We good? All right. I want you to raise your glow sticks up for a second. Look at that. Now, look at that. Look at that. It looks like a little club party. You take a picture of that, Mike. Look, we at the club. All right, put them back down. Dare I say we start cutting these lights off here? What about this Christmas star? You want to leave that on? Now put your glow sticks up again. Look at that. Look at that. Truly he taught us to love one another. Now shake your glow stick. Yeah, you done been through something. You've been through the breaking. You've been through the shaking. But the glow stick is glowing. Now I want to. You can put your. You can put it down. I want to tell you one more thing before we get out of here. I was. I was. You know, there's a there's a YouTube um, that says how stuff works, how things work, and the girl explains glow sticks, and she was doing it very scientifically. She's talking about all the atoms and carbons and all the different chemicals that go in this thing, and yeah, it's got carbons in it. It's got all kinds of stuff in here. Yeah. It's got all kinds of stuff going on in here. I said, that's over my head. And, and, and I, was, I was going to memorize what she said, but then you always have some jerk on the front row making fun. I'm just kidding. <laughs> they was like, dang, DJ's going in. You always got somebody trying to correct you. You know, what? what that ain't a carbon, that's this. So I said, I'm going to leave that alone because I don't know what it is. But she was breaking it down. And something that she said that I thought was awesome, she said there's a break in the shaking and then when that happens, it releases heat. Without heat, this thing can't light up. It's heat that makes it active. And I do know enough about potential energy and kinetic energies. The difference is heat. And some of you are just sitting in potential. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't want any heat. You don't want any breaking. You don't want any shaking. You don't want any testing. And how dare us point our fist at God? when he's breaking and shaking and getting us ready for a greater glory. But I'm telling you, the heat that you supply to your life right now, the shaking and the breaking that's in your life right now, God is up to something. And this Christmas story is a reminder that if we keep our trust in him, if we keep hope up and glow up, great things can be done through us. Just this little glow stick. Yeah, you thought last week, you know, you thought, man, I'm buying this adopter child a gift. It ain't no big deal. You're glowing up. You're glowing up. You thought to yourself, you know what? I'm going to help my neighbor scrape their windows when it's icy outside. You're glowing up. And I think it's, it's so sad that when life gets difficult, we forget how simple it is to glow up. To actually think about somebody outside of ourselves. And what the enemy wants to trick you is especially on Christmas, is to obsess about your life and your situation. Will you glow up? It's in the breaking and the shaking of life that we're challenged to glow up. Heavenly Father, I pray tonight that your Holy Spirit would cause us to glow in dark places. Help us not to quit, God. 
get our hope up so we can glow up. Ultimately, this Christmas story is pointing us that even in dark places, light can shine. It was light that the shepherds saw. It was light that the wise men saw. It was light that ultimately put Mary on her knees and she was in fear. I pray that we let your light through. Lord, some of us are in difficult places and Christmas is hard. But none of us are exempt from glowing. None of us are exempt from glowing. So Lord, I just pray tonight that when we leave out of here, we would be challenged to glow. To glow for your glory. To glow for so that our brothers and sisters can experience love this Christmas. To glow that ultimately when you return, the way would have been paved for you by your children. Help us to glow. In the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. We're going to sing an excerpt of this song as we get out of here. And I'm going to ask you to be weird tonight. We're starting a new tradition. I don't know if we'll do this next year or not. We usually light candles and stand in circles, and I know there's somebody that's going to miss that. You can email me, and I'll read it and laugh. <laughs> I'll read it, I promise, and I'll pray about next year. But I wanted something that would stick with you, something ultimately you could set in front of your TV just for a couple days. Challenge us. As this world gets more and more hopeless, we need more people willing to glow. If you're not careful, you can think of a reason not to enjoy any day of the week. I can't enjoy Monday. My grandpa died on Monday. I can't enjoy Tuesday. Uh, I lost my car on a Tuesday, my senior year in high school. I can't enjoy Wednesday because Wednesday is a day that me and my grandpa ate dinner on. The, if you're not careful, you can make, we can make up all kinds of reasons not to enjoy Christmas. We can make up all kinds of reasons not to be any benefit in the kingdom. The challenge tonight is not just to see a precocious baby. Challenge not to see, oh, I love, some of you love Christmas, you don't mind coming to church. It's meek and it's mild. There's words like hope and peace and joy. You're guaranteed something that's going to tickle your heart. Tonight I want to guarantee to challenge you that this is a hopeless culture. And as we get more and more rural, and we're in a rural community, it's hopelessness. When you go to Walmart this weekend, I want you just to take a look around at the hopelessness on people's faces. People are hopeless. And my goal as a pastor is to be a part of a church that are real people serving hope to real people. And we got to wake up and say, let's serve some hope because this place is hurting. Now, you know what puts the light out on a glow stick. You start gossiping. You start talking about people behind their back. You start running your mouth on others. You start tearing down others. That light goes down and ultimately you go down. How can we bless others? How can we encourage others? How can we pray for one another? How can we glow? Even with the diagnosis, you can glow. I'm a living witness. I had all kinds of deeds going on. I had death, diagnosis, and divorce in my life. And I'm a living witness. Even with all those deeds, you can still glow. You can still glow. You can still get outside your comfort zone. You can still share, care, and love others. And that is what we need to be reminded of tonight. God's Spirit is in you. God's Word is before you. God's purpose is clear. Let's be a people that glow. Silent night, holy night, all is gone, Right now, somebody's in the ICU. 
Lord, right now somebody's in the nursing home. Right now there's a family not able to go to worship service. They're in a waiting room. They're in a surgery waiting room. Quite often our hospitals are full, filled to capacity at this time of the year. Right now somebody is planning plans for their loved ones. Somebody is meeting with the coroner. Right now as we speak, Lord, there are people going through devastating and horrific traumas that they did not sign up for. Right now, Lord, there's a drug addict trying to figure out how to say no. Right now, there's a mom, single, no heat on, praying to you, wishing, hoping something good could happen tomorrow. Lord, it's so easy to get caught up in our feelings to get caught up in our little negative dispositions and to pretend like you're not with us and you don't care. Help us to repent tonight. There's a mission. It's clear. You don't want anybody going to hell. Help us to be a people that remember that. You've called us for such a time as this. I pray this Christmas you bring us closer together. Bring these families closer together. Get our hope up, Lord. On tomorrow, help us not to speak negative. Help us to stay rested in your promises. And even in the shaking and breaking of life, help us remember that we can shine. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Hey, God bless you. See you on Sunday morning. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Go shine, church. Go shine.